Hello again, welcome back to another fuse board uh, deep dive. Now this is quite a rare one. Even I was shocked to come across one of these because they are getting rarer and rarer unlike the Wilexes that are just everywhere. But this, I don't even know the name of it. That's how old it is, okay? Let me, oh, oh, <laughs> crying out loud. <laughs> Smooth as ever. <laughs> right, let me just show you this. So this, is a, I don't know what the name of the board is yet, but this is what was all over Harlow. So this is a consumer unit and it actually bolts onto the side of this head. Now these have been painted white expertly by the previous owner, but they're normally cream in color. So it's like a cream colored matching set. And what's interesting, now I use interesting very loosely, is that this head, so what happens is it's coming out of here and into the meter and then coming out and coming back in. And then there's a nut here that it goes back into and then that comes into the side of the board. So it's all connected. So the only connections you see are out here. So it's quite cool. And also this meter is interesting. It's a double interesting job. I'm really excited. Anyway, let's start from the beginning and do our inspections like we normally would do. So we've got our pilt cable here. No signs of overheating, no leaking pitch as we've seen in previous videos. We've got our TNS earthing system here, which is bolted on there. Um, Earthwise, there's an old gas main there that could do with bonding. Well, I need to test to make sure that it is introduced into a uh, separate path. But if I get rid of this, <laughs> talk amongst yourselves. In fact, wait, 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 that's too exciting. Let's go for the meter first. So this meter, this should be in every property, okay? This is actually a contractor's meter. So if I get a screwdriver, I'll show you. One sec. Screwdriver attained. Right. So underneath here is where it's sealed. So I can take this off, no worries. All good. Okay. Let me just... <laughs> Christ's sake. Hang on, hang on. Hold tight, hold tight. Okay. That is the seal there on the incoming side, not the outgoing side. So this is an isolator. So that is now turned off. So now I can work, I can take these tails out, replace them, do whatever I've got to do, pop the cover back on, and then I can put, turn the meter back on. Every property should have this. It's madness that it doesn't exist. And it's uh, from my previous <laughs> firm as well. <laughs> but. These are really, really just awesome. If you come across them and you need to, you don't need a isolator, every meter should have this built in, but unfortunately they don't. Anyway, let me get this back on because I'm one-handed and cack-handed. Okay, that's back on. Let's get inside this bad boy. So you have to turn it off. You can just about see the on and off here to get the cover off. And this is our fuse board. You can see our tails coming in the side just there. The earthing is on that nut there which is then <laughs> just on that nut there, which is expertly taken over to these connector blocks. So everything would have been on that nut at the back originally, but someone's added an extra point. So they put them in all in this connector block. You can see by today's standards, obviously it's a, a little bit different. Um, it is a, I don't even know what that says, pre print whatever that says there, <laughs> I can't read it. Right, I'm not gonna be removing these car carriers because as you can see, see the cloth? No, you can't because it's not focusing. See the cloth? So there is asbestos flash guards underneath these. You can see the access to the live parts. It'll be a 3036 fuse in there. So we've got our five amp carrier and our 30 amp carriers. The other thing to point out is if you saw my Wilex video, I was talking about other types of fuses and the ones with these dots. Now these come off and fall out. And you notice these ain't color marked. This is a very, very old board, but these fall off and then this actually exposed live parts. So when you come to handle the fuse, you can end up getting an electric shock. So it's not very clever. Um, that's it though. There's nothing else to the fuse board. It's just that <laughs> there's sort of, well, that was the earth bar. There's our earth bar. There's our neutral bar. And that's it. It's just, there's even, look, look, check it out. 
pristine condition as well. Look at the little tab on it. I know I'm getting a little bit excited. I mean, I shouldn't get excited about old stuff, but seeing something this old still in service is mad. Because I've done a video before where I've done inspections on an old property and that had this fuse board because it was in Harlow, but it had been changed out for a more modern one. I mean, it was 16th edition, so it's not modern. But when you bear in mind, this board is from the 19, I'd say, oh. Now, this is where we need to age things. Hang on, I'll start another clip. So if you've seen my other video, I was talking about aging and installation. Now this one, if you notice, the CPCs are actually present on all of the conductors. So that earth there is the, on the lighting cable. This is different to that other video because there was no CPC on the lights. And as I said in that video, CPCs became mandatory at every point in 1966. So I know that this consumer unit or this installation is perhaps around that age. So I would say 66, 67, that kind of late 60s, I would age this as. So, um, it's getting on a bit, isn't it, really? But the fact it's got CPC on the lights means that this installation has not been tested yet, but it might still be able to be used. I'm not just saying that it shouldn't be upgraded because it's very, very old. However, if the installation resistance comes back okay, the ring final circuit's in a good condition, and there is an earth at every point, it's still okay for continued use, right? Might recommend that it's upgraded, you know, if the house has just been bought, it might make sense to try and upgrade everything now while it's empty, get it all rewired. It's gonna be a lot more cost effective than having things break down in the future and do damage to the decoration. But the cable is, it's, it's PVC. Like I've said before, is it ever gonna perish? Like, I mean, they're choking turtles in the ocean, all this plastic everywhere. So is that ever gonna perish? I don't know, but I would say that this is a uh, late 60s and then it's just a little bit of a ancient thing. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm in love with this, uh, <laughs> this <little> circuit chart. <laughs> but we've got the asbestos coming out here. I don't know if they've got asbestos carriers in the, on the lighting circuits. It doesn't look like it. It looks like they've been taken out. I don't know how much you could actually see there because I was uh, looking myself and not looking with the camera. And buy safe for continued use. I don't mean by any stretch of the imagination of keeping this bad boy in. No, that is no good. We're in a, in a house. There's sockets that could be used outside. There's a bathroom, no RCD protection. I'm not suggesting that this should stay in use. Not at all. But this could potentially be upgraded if the cables test out okay. Now, if properties are left alone, they're not really fit for purpose by from like modern standards because there'll be a socket in every one of the bedrooms, just one and like two sockets in the kitchen, and maybe two in the living room. The lights will be over by the, the um, windows usually. It's not really fit for purpose for a modern home. But if you were just gonna move in and it's not been touched, I haven't been around, so I don't know if it's been, you know, changed in any way and adapted. I imagine it has been. Then this wiring may be completely fine and we can upgrade this consumer unit and leave it as is. But yeah, so. I just wanted to clear that up in case it sounded like I was suggesting that this fuse board was okay for continued use. I mean, if there was an upfront RCD, they can maybe say, well, you know, you could probably take these out, put it to an RCD and then come back and feed it, but I'm not suggesting that that should be done um, at all. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick a mask on and I'm gonna withdraw, because I don't know if there's a carrier underneath there, um, an asbestos carrier underneath there, but I think it's important for learners to show you what's inside here. So I'm gonna go and get a mask, withdraw this, get away from it, and see what's going on behind it. Okay, here's our fuse carrier. So we can see our tiny piece of fuse wire again, and then you can see the, see the screws that come through. So they are just behind these little covers, and they come out quite easily. Uh, is that Renio? Is that the name of the board? I'm not sure, but that's our fuse carrier there. Hopefully you guys can see that nice and clear. There'll be a fuse wire on there. Now inside here, we have, so I'm doing this at um, a bit of a distance. So I oh, mind you, I'm wearing a mic so you can hear me anyway. So can you see the little flash guard inside there? So that is an asbestos flash guard. If they are left alone, they're not gonna do much, but if you do come across them, just, I mean, the official stance on these, if you're coming to, if you come across these, is just to do live testing and get them removed. So 
this would have to be removed by someone that is competent to do so. So I, um, I was a specialist trained, my, my training has lapsed. So you would have to, now correct me in the comments if you want to, but I believe what you would be doing is this basically has to be cut off. The cables just need to be cut off. The fuse carrier is left in place. You cut all of them and then you just close the lid up and it's disposed and double bagged. You wet it down when the power's off, obviously. Cut all of the cables and then get them out. Wipe them down and dispose of this and everything else double bag as asbestos waste because there's no other way to really work on these safely. But let's face it, is that gonna happen? Most contractors just throw them in the bin and then they just go to landfill. So, I mean, it's, it's not fair because obviously people will inadvertently come across asbestos. I've been exposed to asbestos quite a bit. I worked on a NHS contract at North Middlesex Hospital. I was doing a substation in there for I think I was there for nine, no, six, nine months. And it turned out one of the other contractors had smashed asbestos up and it was in the air vent blowing into the room that I was in the whole time. So yeah, I have been pretty badly exposed to asbestos. It takes 30 years to kill you. I was 20. So yeah, in 15 years, I'm probably gonna die. So, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't be careful around asbestos. Anyway, I'm gonna pop that carrier back in. Okay, that's back together. Just opened up this main switch to have a little look. So I'll be getting my, obviously need to get my ZE, PFC and what have you from this. But two screw terminals, nice to see. It'd be good if they made a comeback. Then uh, that just obviously goes up to our bars, our neutral bar here. You can just see the cable coming in at the back. And then I don't know how it gets onto the bars bar because I'm not going to be taking it apart as it's full of asbestos. Anyway. Hopefully you guys got something out of that. It might have been something you've never seen before. I mean, if I come across anything this ancient or basically anything, I'm gonna try and do a whole series on every fuse board I come across. It's gonna be the most riveting piece of YouTube you've ever seen. Um, but yeah, these were mainly in, I've seen these in Stevenage and Harlow. So they're new towns and they're quite old now, but when they were thrown up, lots of these are about and they're still in use. So anyway, hopefully you got something out of that. And I'll catch you in the next one.